When I was on one of my very first hurricane flights, I noticed something. Well, I noticed a lot of rain, wind, turbulence, and adrenaline, but I also noticed something else. I kind of just sat there and smiled to myself because I realized that most of what I learned in college, I did not use on that airplane. So for those of you that don't know, our other job that we do is flying through hurricanes with the hurricane hunters. We're part-time in the Air Force and that's just, that's just our job, that's what we do. In college, I spent days solving massive math problems and figuring out the heat exchange between different phases of water. I also calculated how hard it has to rain before a cop's radar gun couldn't pick you up anymore. A very useful skill, actually. But it's all useless information to remember when I'm sitting on that airplane collecting data in the middle of a hurricane. What I learned was all correct information, and I needed to learn it, it just didn't apply at all to my job now as an operator. Sitting in that airplane and collecting hurricane data, we have to focus on a completely different set of principles than we would focus on if we were just forecasting total snowfall amounts for our ski trip this weekend. We went through the same realization with money in our business. Everything we had been taught about money was mostly through the lens of personal finance. It was all correct, but most of it wasn't applicable in a business environment, and sometimes it even hurt us. To stay profitable and to grow our business, we needed to focus on different principles about handling money. So what were the traps that we fell into? What missing information did we learn about money that helped us grow and scale our businesses? Chances are you probably already know some of these principles. But specifically, there was one new rule of business money that blew our minds. You're gonna to wanna to stick around for that one. How personal finance differs from business finance is the topic for this episode of Maker's Money. We've started and destroyed multiple businesses. Now with a little experience under our belts, we've started and operated two businesses simultaneously and they're both growing fast. Despite COVID, despite supply chain issues, we've been able to stay profitable since almost day one of both our furniture business and our multimedia business. It's not because we're special. It's not because we're different from anybody else. It's actually because our stubbornness got us into trouble a few times. And we realized we needed to prioritize money a little bit differently in a business than we did in our personal finances. So what do you need to do to avoid losing money? How do you ensure that you're maximizing your business's money-making potential? If you don't hear anything else we say in this video, hear this. Talk to a good local CPA in your area. CPA stands for Certified Public Account. Accountant. Once you've made about $10,000, it's time to bring in some outside help. Most good CPAs will even meet with you for free just to talk and answer questions for the very first time. But even if you have to pay a couple hundred bucks for the first meeting, they can help you with your finances a lot cheaper than just yourself through the school of hard knocks. Our CPA is the first call we make when we have any sort of money question. But in the rest of this video, we're gonna share some more specific tips that we've learned over the years and just introduce you to our general approach of how to handle money in business. Now keep in mind, this is all for us operating in the United States. First, we're gonna dive into a couple of principles of personal finance that could hurt you when running a business. And then we're gonna share with you some of our personal opinions about how to handle money in a business. One of the first rules we learn in personal finance is to shop around for the best deal. It's really important that you remain patient. Delayed gratification is another way to say it. But for personal finances, it's best to look around. Where can you find a tool or uh, a new car or a house with the most number of features at the cheapest price? And this is a great idea for personal finance. But in a business, you're wasting another very important resource that's more important than money, and that's time. In a business, if you need a tool or a piece of equipment or an employee, just get it. Google the phrase opportunity costs and you'll sort of understand what I'm saying here. But if you waste time shopping around for a deal, you're wasting time that could be spent producing product and making a profit. You're gonna waste more time and money shopping around for a deal than the discount is going to give you on the back end. So again, if you need a new tool or you need a piece of equipment, just buy it. Don't shop around for a deal. We made a whole video on just this concept so you can go and watch it if you want. 
All right, the second principle of personal finance that we learned. Debt is bad. Where are my Dave Ramsey people at? In personal finance, debt is very hard for some people to manage for a lot of reasons. It can stack up quickly. You can lose your job. You could have an emergency, which makes the debt a much heavier load than it originally was when you signed the lease right after that pay raise. Debt is just a really difficult thing to manage for a lot of people in personal finances. We're going to tackle this later on the business side, but avoiding debt just out of fear is really going to stunt the growth of your business. So don't be afraid of debt. It's an important tool. There's a lot of risk involved, but it's just just another tool. Just like your table saw. Yeah, it's risky to use a, a table saw blade that's spinning really fast, but if you respect it and you use it appropriately, it can be a really powerful tool for your business. And the last principle of personal finance that might backfire on you in a, in a business is to save, save, save. We're taught from a very young age, at least I was, we we're taught from a very young age, save every scrap of money that you have left over. Maybe we didn't always do it, but that's what we were taught is to save money that we have when we have some left over. You're saving it for your future self. My sister, when she got birthday money or made tips at a restaurant, like she kept every spare nickel she had in her bank account. And she always had money for whatever it is that she wanted. But in a business, you actually get penalized for hoarding money like that. It's called taxes. At the end of the year, you get taxed on your profits, which means if you don't spend the money, Uncle Sam is going to come take a third of it away from you. This is the part where you talk to your CPA. And Uncle Sam is not trying to screw you out of your hard-earned money. He wants you to stimulate the economy with it. He wants you to, to trade the money around and to spend it on on your business so that you can grow. It, Uncle Sam doesn't like it when people save and hoard money. That's part of why they tax it is because they want to incentivize you to spend it and let it circulate through the economy. Money in a business is kind of like a game of hot potato. Nobody wants to be holding it when the timer runs out at the end of the year. So unless you need to save for an emergency fund or something like that for your business, um, don't hoard money. We recommend having a separate savings account and if you're going to save money for an emergency fund or just to plan for the future, we recommend that you take 30% of all your profits, throw it in that extra savings account, and then you've always got money come tax season to pay off your debts. But again, that's just our opinion. Talk to a CPA. Okay, so now it's time to talk about business finance. I know we've already said this, but we want to reiterate, personal finance does not equal business finance. It doesn't mean that personal finance rules are wrong, it just means that they might not help you in a business. So business finance principle number one, keep business money separate. Do not share accounts with your personal finances, open up separate checking and maybe even savings accounts so that everything you make in your business is completely separated from your own personal money. And for those of you just starting out, this account doesn't even have to specifically be a business checking account. It can just be another separate personal checking account, but you want to keep all of your business money separate from your personal finances. Again, talk to a CPA, but we just want to make sure you're not mixing money in the same account. Keeping the money separate will save you a ton of headache when it comes to tax season. It'll also allow you to hire somebody down the road to do bookkeeping and make their life so much easier. It also helps you minimize your risk when you're starting a business. You can determine upfront how much personal money you want to risk when starting this business. Deposit that amount into this new business account and hold yourself accountable if it runs out of money. It might be time to call it quits if you're consistently running out in this account and you're constantly reviving it with your own personal money. But if you didn't have a separate account, you might not realize that you were spending a lot of money to get this business off the ground. But anyways, just find a way to keep your business money separate from your personal money. All right, and the next thing, we're about to pick a fight with the Dave Ramsey crowd here, but the next principle of business finance is debt is for assets. Debt is not necessarily a bad thing to have in a business. Debt is just a tool, like a table saw. If you misuse it, it's gonna hurt you pretty bad but it's also pretty helpful if you use it right. Debt is an amazing tool that allows you to borrow from your future success so that you can get there faster. Get educated on it and learn when and how to use it. And determine how much risk you're willing to tolerate. Some people don't have any trouble sleeping at night knowing they have half a million in debt. Some people can't handle that or don't want to. It's different for every person and we can't give generalized advice on that. But just know that debt is not scary when we're talking business finance. Just set some boundaries, make sure you're disciplined, and it's just another Another tool for you to use. The best example of good debt in a business is buying assets. Let's pretend I want to buy a big fancy laser engraver to personalize all of my cutting boards. Personalization is the number one reason that people buy our boards. So we need a laser to pull that off. I mean, 
we could hand carve names on the boards for a couple of months until we make enough money to buy a laser. Or we could buy a laser on credit, make small monthly payments, and be able to ship hundreds of cutting boards right from the start. The laser is going to make us money, not cost us money. And that is called an asset. Tools purchased on credit can be paid off very easily if you have a solid business plan on how they're going to make you money. But bottom line, debt is not scary. It's just another tool that you can use within your business. Just be responsible. All right, are you ready for this? This is our number one most favorite, most hard learned lesson about money within business. And that is to focus on the money in, not the money out. Let me show you what I mean by that. So when you work for a paycheck, like we're all familiar with, it's very important that you budget out your money and live within your means. This mug, this is your paycheck. You get money from your employer in your paycheck. From the money in this paycheck, you need to make sure that you are evenly distributing the funds into everything you need to pay off, like your car, or your rent, or your food, or your monthly bills. And at the end of the month, you might have a little bit of money left over. You can put this towards your retirement fund, you can save it, you could go blow it on a new toy you've been wanting, I mean, tool that you've been wanting. But afterwards, that's it. You don't really get any extra money. Maybe you get a raise or a holiday bonus, but by and large, you pretty much get the same amount every month in your paycheck. And we have to be very careful about how we divide it up and spend it and make sure all of our necessities have been paid for. But running a business is expensive and somehow we just magically have way more cups that end up popping up, especially the longer you're in business. Like payroll or insurance. That stuff's expensive. Or maybe you got a new CNC or maybe a new laser. Just like that, we have a whole new line of expenses for ourselves. And I've only got two marbles left over to pay for all these new expenses. But what can we do in a business that we cannot do in our paycheck? Make sales. If we go out and sell product and find customers, we can make virtually unlimited money. So no matter how many little cups we have lined up down here, we can always go make sales and have money to pay all of them. There are very few problems in a business that more money can't solve. So your time is best spent bringing more money into the business instead of focusing on the money leaving the business. So don't spend your time budgeting or shopping around for deals or trying to save money, go out and make more sales. Maybe once a year you can sit down with your CPA and try to trim some of the fat, but until then your time is much better spent going out, making sales and bringing in more money. So in summary, talk to a CPA. If you've made more than $10,000, sit down with them and figure out your strategy moving forward for your business. They can help you learn the missing information and the details about finances. YouTube is not a great place to learn because uh, you're getting into situation specific advice and a random YouTube video is not necessarily the best place to go for that. You can also set up a brand new account for your business money. Again, it doesn't have to be a business specific account, but it can just be another personal checking account, but keep your money separate between personal and business business finance. If that account dries up and runs out of money, maybe carefully consider injecting more money into it, or maybe have a tough conversation with yourself and think about calling it quits. You can also identify in your own business where you're letting personal finance principles sort of hold your business back. And then you can just get out of the way and start letting your business grow and thrive and make more money. This video is from a series of videos called Maker's Money. If you want to watch that playlist from the very beginning, click right here. Ask me how